There's something about Philadelphia fans that's a little different. Um, we boo our own teams as soon as they start to falter. And we cheer them like crazy when they succeed. And right now, Philadelphians are cheering like mad for these New Life Science companies. Uh, we think Philadelphia uh, is a probably underappreciated uh, center for potential biotechnology innovation and, and commercialization. We have had a long-standing interest in cell and gene therapy as a discipline. And this was not true everywhere. Philadelphia had a rough start with gene therapy because many years ago, a young man died in an experimental uh, case, uh, a treatment using gene therapy. And people gave up around the country, to the, around the world. And it's so fitting for Philadelphia to sort of be the place where gene therapy is now being resurrected. It is a company, we took a philosophy that is very similar to the theme of this meeting, which is that it starts with one approval, it starts with one product that makes it to market, it starts with one product that makes it to market and can get access, that gain access for patients. The ultimate, it starts with one for all of us, is to see the transformational effect that novel therapies can have for a patient. I was the first, I was the first patient uh, in January 2006. And I, I remember I was at, uh, in my bed at, in uh, Bethesda, Maryland and at, at NIH. I took the first pill. And I can tell you that I feel pretty good now I'm 50. <laughs> I, feel, I feel better now when I'm 50 than I do when I was 30, which is kind of strange. So maybe it's like going backwards or something. I think for patients with a disease like I have, HATTR amyloidosis, technology and biotechnology um, is key. Among the manifestations of Philadelphia becoming a center for gene therapy, today I just visited over at the Children's Hospital a virus vector manufacturing facility where they're actually creating the viruses that will carry the genes into the patients to provide the cures. I mean, I'm living a miracle. You know, like in, in one lifetime, they told me that my children would go blind, and in, you know, in the same lifetime, I seen that that diagnosis erased. I also visited the BioLabs facility at the New Science Center here in Philadelphia, uh, which is an accelerator for startup companies, most of them in the gene therapy field. One of these new companies called Charisma. I met the young founder of the company who's working on programming macrophages to attack solid tumors. But it could eventually lead to our ability to cure some kinds of cancers that we've never been able to cure before. Every year, the thing that grows most rapidly at the Bio Convention is the partnering process. Last year, we had 46,000 one-on-one meetings. We broke the Guinness World Record for one-on-one -on -one meetings. We're gonna probably break that record again this year. We're also gonna be talking about policy because never before has the science been so promising and has the politics been so challenging. Uh, there's so much political pressure uh, in Washington and out in the states on, on price controls and cutting into our intellectual property rights that all the science could go away. And so we at BIO have to lead the way to making sure that the policy environment supports the science environment. Frankly, most of the origins of what is today our current cell and gene therapy approved products are from Philadelphia. It's about starting with one molecule, seeing with one scientist who's maybe had one conversation and they come up with one treatment and they start one brand new company and it starts with one patient and that's where the hope comes from.